For parents of the four Idaho murder victims, the pain lingers. And yet, now they aren't even allowed to speak publicly about their feelings for fear of violating a gag order. And yet there's a lot of news about issues that directly impact them. For example, the student's house on King Road, News Nation getting a hold of a letter sent by university administration conveying this to the families of the victims. The letter from the acting general counsel for the University of Idaho reads in part, I first want to express my condolences to each of you for the tragic loss you've suffered. It goes on to say, I'm writing to communicate to each of you regarding the university's plans for the house at 1122 King Road. The homeowner gifted the house to the university with the intent by both parties that it be demolished. Before doing so, we will complete remediation within the house to address biohazards and chemical hazards that exist as a result of the crimes and ensuing investigation. Adding at the completion of the remediation, we intend to have the team gather any items of personal property that do not appear to be contaminated and transfer them to university personnel who will take these items to a secure offsite location for representative members of the families to review and recover items of your family members that you wish to keep. We intend to proceed with demolition as soon after completion of the remediation as can be done. We do not have a specific date for when this will occur. We'll notify you of the demolition date in advance so you're not caught surprised by media reports. The university has said the sooner they demolish the house, the better, and they plan to have it knocked down by the end of the semester, which according to the university's academic calendar, graduations on May 13th. Now, Brian Koberger is not due to be back in court until June for his preliminary hearing, so by then, the House could be gone. But there are questions over whether this speedy removal of the home, which is a crime scene, is a good idea. Some say the House should stay up throughout the trial. It's a key piece of evidence. And as News Nation first reported last night, the parents that we spoke to seem to want the House to stay up, at least for now. But others argue that a virtual tour of the property will be sufficient for a jury to see in weighing the case. Remember in the recent Alex Murdoch double murder case, before the trial wrapped, the jury visited the Murdoch family home called Moselle, where the murders of Maggie and Paul Murdoch took place. More importantly, are the authorities and others keeping the families involved in some of the difficult choices that need to be made? They are victims too in this. And understanding what they are going through and what their desires are has to be taken into account. Joining me now is Brian Etten, News Nation senior national correspondent who has been covering this story from Idaho and been on the beat from the start. All right, Brian, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. So first, let me ask you broadly, are the families satisfied with how involved they have or haven't been in some of the major decisions that have been made in the last month or so? It's a good question. I think it depends on what day you ask different different family members. I, you know, I think there's been some frustration along the way that they haven't always been kept in the loop. But overall, I think lately they do feel like they are getting at least most of the information that they want. Uh, it, it does appear you read that letter. I mean, the university sent them that letter before putting out publicly uh, the details of how they were going to demolish the house. So they were trying to let them know first. Uh, we know that they're in touch with the prosecutor uh, about different things going on behind the scenes. For example, when um, all those search warrants were released a couple of weeks ago, we know they let the families know what was coming out first. Hey, this is going to be made public. It's going to be in the news. So I think they're trying to keep them in the loop. Um, but obviously, you know, they're there are things going on with the investigation, especially with the gag order, uh, that, that they're just not telling anyone right now. What do you make of the university's comment about returning to them any personal property that isn't contaminated? What, what does that even mean? Does that mean that it was somehow destroyed? I mean, what are they talking about? Yeah, so when I was outside the house early on, um, at one point they brought out a lot of the personal items that belonged to the victims. Uh, it, that was one of the saddest things, at, you know, f covering this, because you saw, you know, just like golf clubs and makeup and everything that a college kid would have in their apartment. They, they brought out the front door, put into a U-Haul that the police chief was actually driving, and then the, the, the families of the victims were able to come and gather those items. So I know they already have those items. I mean, I don't want to get too graphic, but the way I sort of read that letter is, you know, there's still stuff in the house that's contaminated just because it was such a gruesome crime scene. Mm -hmm. So they're sending in this cleaning crew first. Thank you for watching. 
Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.